going to go on to your your fifth, your fourth choice, which is footballers. Oh yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, forwards. I think. Yeah, well, forwards, football. Fo- yeah, fair enough. Okay. Forward. Um, yeah, having had the privilege to play with some unbelievable footballers, you know. Uh, you can roll the names off. Uh, I mean, one of them just passed away not long ago, a, a living legend in Frank Worthington, you know, I had yeah. the privilege to play with for a year. You know, all these people cross your path and it's, you know, they, 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 they become workmates, um, but they are fantastic at their job. And I've got to say, so my first one is no surprise to Gary and perhaps not a surprise to uh, many Arsenal fans either. And that is... Um, don't let, let me guess. Let me guess. What is it? Is it John Hawley? <laughs> Ray Hankin. Oh, I knew it was one of them too. <laughs> um, it's Dennis. It's got to be Dennis. Dennis Bergkamp. Oh, the greatest. Um, um, you know, and I say this to people quite often. You know, as, as much as his lord as, as this great footballer, um, people see him on a Saturday afternoon. When you see him day to day. That tells you how good people are, and you see it. You don't see a different side, but you see more of it. Mm. And uh, the appreciation of of his talent, his determination, his um, conscientiousness—you know—to be as good as he was, and his natural ability. Uh, he, he was, yeah, he. he it was exceptional. I don't think there'll be uh, another one like Dennis. And I think I'm right in saying, and Gary. You might you might pick me up on this, but I think I'm right in saying that Dennis Bergkamp is the only player to have goal A, B, and C in goal of the month. Correct. Wow. Mm. Was it the all against Leicester? Um, yeah, he got the hat trick against Leicester, which I was there that night. I think I was on the bench that night. Um, my usual position, I've got to say. Um, and yeah, it's just his natural ability. But one of the goals that he did score that was similar to the third goal, I think it was at Leicester, was against Tottenham Hotspur at Highbury. You might remember it. I remember right, it well. Right, he crosses it in, Dennis far post, outside of his right foot, brings it back inside the defender. Defender goes for a cup of tea and, and um, Dennis puts it in the goal. It was um, snowing, I think, that day. Yeah, and I was in goal that day. Was you really? I was in goal that Great day. Yeah. Uh, yes, and Andy Adams uh, scored late on as well. Yeah, uh, Andy Sinton scored. Can you remember the goal? No, I can't remember their goal. Right. Well, their goal came about by uh, there was a there was a running battle, and Patrick Vieira was involved, and Patrick got top, so level with the eighteen yard box out towards the touchline, and somebody did him. I can't remember who done him actually. And uh, so he's down in a heap and the ball ends up with me. having made a save, I believe, uh, which again was unusual for me. And so Patrick's down, uh, so I throws the ball out of play. Now, at that point, what, what used to happen, and I, I suppose still does to a certain extent, is the ball gets thrown back to you. Well, they didn't. They kept the ball themselves and <clears throat> into the box. Andy Sinton had a strike. Wet night it was. Ball hits the post, hits the back of my shoulder and goes in. For, I think it, that made it 1-1. And then from then we just, I think Tony scored as well that night. Yeah, Tony so, scored late. Oh, the, but there were two late goals, actually. Yes, there were. Yeah. And Dennis's was the third one. And, uh, yeah. but it was you know, game. absolutely, yeah. But, I mean, uh, Dennis scored some absolutely great goals. But he also uh, provided an awful lot for the likes of Henri Perez, uh, over Mars, all these people, um, and Elka even we had in there. Um, but Dennis, Dennis it, it is up there with uh, as one of the all-time greats of my generation, shall we say? Dennis is in. I was I was close. Evidently, two of the goals against Leicester and one um, at the Den at the Dell, should I say? Was, yes, uh, he was. For, I thought we saw all three, but yeah, yeah. Um, but nevertheless, all three. I don't like we say. I don't think anybody's amazing. Amazing. Number two. On the list. Number two would be uh, the shy and retiring Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry. Thierry he's got. Henry. A, he's got a. He, 
he's got to be in there. He just cannot, you know, as a forward uh, and as a goalkeeper and the appreciation of. Um, but an interesting little thing with with, with Dennis, um, with Thierry, Wright is similar, um, Robert Perez is similar. Um, well, Robert Perez is Robert Perez, but when I tell you, you're going to go, what's he, what's he on about? But um, as a goalie, you, you, as a goalkeeper, you, you're picking up little bits of information. So you're seeing somebody with a ball and you pick up bits of information. Now, your save doesn't start after the ball's in flight. Your save probably starts on the point of impact, if not slightly earlier than the point of impact on the ball. And now, with all these players that I've just mentioned, one of the things that they, they share is they've got 10 to 2 feet. So, so as a goalkeeper, you've got a problem because where a norm, somebody with a normal gait would have to open up, these guys don't. They just run straight onto it, and it's a side foot. And it, uh, Robert Perez is a classic example. Dennis is the same, where you don't get, you, you, as a goalkeeper, you don't get the sight of the body actually starting to open up for it to give you the message of what's going to happen next because it's all done in one motion. So that's why when you see Thierry and Robert and, and Dennis uh, and it's dispatched and the goal is like nowhere near it, or even though you probably know where it's going, is because you've not had the, those indicators to tell you what's going to happen in the next sort of split second. That's and amazing. Then, Absolutely amazing. Te technical inside that, you know. That's where I went wrong. I had 25 to 5 feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you think about it logically, you know, if that's your running style, then the, then, then you know, you it's just a natural body movement. It's just a continuation of what you're doing. Whereby for somebody to dis try and disguise that, they're going to have to open it up. Yeah. So yeah. Brilliant. So interesting. Thierry and Dennis, number three Sorry? is forwards. Three. Uh, well, this man's got to be in there. Um, Yobo, as we affect, uh, affectionately called him, Tony Yoboa. Tony Yaboa. He scores now, well, Whether or not anybody can remember Tony Yaboa, uh, yeah. if you can't, just go and have a look at some of the clips of some of his goals. That goal uh, against Liverpool that you smashes on off the underside of the bar. What a goal yeah. that was. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, I was in goal that night. Um, but, uh, you know, he arrived at Leeds with, with his, um, not so much a reputation, he'd been big in Germany um, and scored goals in Germany, fell out, I, I believe, um, with his club in Germany and came to Leeds. And we, it's not like it is today, really, in so much as you, you, you've got a huge knowledge of European football. So he arrives and he was just absolutely phenomenal. Power. And not only was he phenomenal, uh, one of the things I would say, he was one of the uh, best goal scorers. And what I mean, what I mean to say by that is that he would score a tap in, he would score a thirty yarder, he would take you on, he would take it around the goalie, he would score a header. He, he scored all sorts of goals. Mm. So he wasn't a one trick pony. And you know the goals that people remember. You know, obviously Wimbledon and, and Liverpool. Yeah. Um, but but they were not the exception, you know, because uh, he scored a hat trick against uh, Ipswich one. I think it was Wednesday night at Ellen Road, you know. And again, it was an assortment of goals. But the one thing about him, he seemed to he, he seemed to make things look easy. And again, he, he had that persona of um, that he was laid back, but he was he was such a, a cracking footballer. He was. Yeah, unbelievable. He was. How uh, long was he at Leeds, John? Well, I left in '96. George then came in in '96, seven, I think it was, and yeah. he, he had a big falling out with 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 George then, and so he, he was there probably about three, four years at the yeah. most. I think he was there. Yeah, I didn't think he was there too long, but yeah, he scored. Virtually scored one in two, I think. You both. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, it, it, you know, he had a purple, purple patch, yeah. you know, and, and it, it was, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, even in training, you know, he would generate power from nothing. Yeah. You know, and that's 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 difficult to do. He looked you a know. unit. He just looked muscle oh, bound, if anything. Yeah, I mean, it was big around the hips and what have you, so you couldn't get close to him, and it could it could just roll you and shake you off and what have you, but. Um, you know, in terms of goal scoring, like I say, the reason that I include him is because it all round, you know, so every aspect of goal scoring, he was there, you know, so from long range to short range. Uh, so, yeah, Yobo's got to be in there as one of the... Like, evidently, 24 goals in 47 appearances at Leeds. He was there from 95 to 97. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, which is not a long period of time by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Well, the fact Number four on your list, Luki. Number four on my list would be, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure where this guy comes from. I'm not sure what his nationality is. Uh, but um, I had the privilege of knowing him. I had uh, the privilege of playing in a couple of testimonials with him when I was a mere slip of a lad. Uh, but above all else, uh, not only was he a... a, a um, a fantastic, great, I think, great footballer, but he was a great man as well. Uh, and that is John Charles. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's from Doncaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and John was, you know, people leave an impression on you in life. And John, I, I was a young kid, you know, so John really, he, he was he was a massive star, you know. It, I think he's been voted, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the the best uh, foreign import into Syria, or is it Juventus? Yeah, um, he's still revered over there. Yeah, yeah, they think he's a, an absolute god, and I think when he got, when he when he went back when he was still alive, you know, he got he got greeted as a hero. Yeah, you know, and that's not an easy feat, you know, particularly with Italian football. And the you know the the history that they've got the players that they have but Big John I think it was um, he well Jack Charlton Jack Charlton used to say that you know you take your pick you know play him up front or play him at centre half it doesn't really matter because he's just as good in any position you wouldn't know any different but he was a he was a humble guy he was a guy that. You know, uh, he, he obviously knew how good he was, but yeah. he didn't need to tell everybody. No, exactly. You know? yeah. and, that, and that's the art, really. I think that's the true, that, that's true greatness because there isn't that insecurity because he's, he's almost saying, well, you know, judge me on what I, how I play. You know, this is who I am. You know, what I do on a football pitch is, uh, is something else. Uh, yeah, great, great guy. I went to his funeral uh, up in Leeds which was, you know, massive event because obviously, you know, he'd, um, you know, he'd spent a great deal of time at Leeds and, yeah, yeah. you know, when he came back from Italy, unfortunately, you know, things didn't go his way and various other things in his life and uh, it was sad to see at the end that he, he, he perhaps didn't have the, the trappings of what he should have for the no. talent that he, that, he, that he possessed. My dad used to say, my dad was a sports writer, John, and he always used to say about uh, uh, John Charles, he could head a ball as far as he could kick it. And yeah. I didn't know at the time as a kid whether that meant he was a really great header of the ball or whether he just couldn't kick it very well. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, he, you know, he, he, people talk about him in Wales now as, as one of the all-time greats still. And, I mean, he was in a great team in that 58 team, wasn't he, with the, 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 uh, the Ivor Hall Church and... Um, uh, yeah, he was, ben but Charles I think... And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was a great side, but I think you know sometimes you look at great players and they sort of like have that stature and that presence. And John was one of those players. He he, he used that presence. And I, I mean, my limited sort of like knowledge of being on a football pitch with him. You know, I, I remember the testimonials, and you look at him in a white strip, and you go, "Jesus Christ!" You know what I mean? Mm. And all right, he might have put on a few pounds at that point, but. Um, he was a big lad, but when you, I mean, seeing some of the photographs of him when he went to Italy, he didn't have strip well. You know, he was a unit. You know, it, and back in a back in a, a generation where, you know, the emphasis really wasn't on fitness. John was like, 
you know, he, he was lean and he was he was a unit and he stripped yeah. really, really well. You know, uh, and like, like modern day footballers, you know, if you put a modern day football in a changing room uh, of, a, say, an 80s team, you'd probably tell the difference. Yeah. You know, but John was that, John, you wouldn't have told the difference with John because John was, um, yeah, he, he was a unit, great footballer, scored lots of goals, had humility, which is, you know, something that's an endearing quality. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. there's no there's no wonder why he was revered at uh, Juve. One hundred and eight goals in one hundred and fifty five appearances. Mm. Oh wow, that's unbelievable! Yeah, and that's Italian football, and that's when the emphasis yeah. is, is on on defence. Defending, yeah, and invariably they played with a sweeper as well. Yeah. yeah. So your goes. final choice of your of your forwards, John? My final choice. Uh, well, I, I've got to put him in there. Uh, on font terrible himself, Eric Cantona. <laughs> yes, Eric, he's made the previous Eric, list or two. Yeah, Eric's got to be in there. I, I mean, uh, you no, know, other than John, really, um, John Charles. I've, I've had the good grace to play with these players, so um, I've been a lucky, lucky man. Um, but Eric arrives at Leeds. Uh, nobody really knowing a great deal about him, knowing that he had his trials and tribulations in France. Yeah. And although people credit Eric with being a, uh, the catalyst that, that really won as the league at Leeds, uh, that's very unfair on the, on the players that actually did win the league, simply because, and I'm not doing him a disservice by any stretch of the imagination, because he's a huge talent, and that's the reason that I've included him. Mm-hmm. And what I'll probably go on to talk about what he did post Leeds, but when he arrived at Leeds, he was he was at the, probably a crossroads in his career. He um, he was a smart guy. I remember one day we were and Eric was uh, uh, well, no, uh, don't understand, uh, you know. Sorry, don't speak English. All that sort of cape, and you're going, Christ, you know, how's he going to get on with this? So we're in the canteen one day after training, and. Um, <laughs> I think it was myself, Mel Stirl, and I think Gordon Strachan was on there, and Eric is a table, a nice cosy table for four with flowers and what have you. And um, so Eric is sat diagonally opposite Mel Sterland. So uh, the, the saltpeter is right next to Eric. So Mel says, uh, Eric, pass us a salt, will you? And Eric just goes, picks it up and passes it him, and we're all going, oh, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, so I think it was selective hearing on his part. But in terms of footballer, he I think it's fair to say that um, he transformed a, a lot of the way that um, the players thought about the game and about how important it was to train and how you looked after yourself. And even if you talk to the lads at Man United, they'll say exactly the same. I mean, you've heard me say this before, Gary, but he was the first on the training pitch. He was the last off it. Um, practice, you know, none of, none of the stuff that you see these guys perform uh, across the board yeah. come you know, without any sort of like uh, attention to detail. And Eric was attention to detail. But just going back to what I was saying about Eric and, and the league when at Leeds, you know, he got credited with being the catalyst. Well, he came on in games a, a lot of the time that we'd, we'd already got the upper hand in and perhaps even winning and scored the odd goal here and there. And I think his true, um, uh, th- what defines him as a footballer is Manchester United. Um, and it suited him down to the ground because at Leeds, um, on certain occasions, he was asked to play up front and Eric never liked to play with his back to goal. He preferred to be seeing the play and he found his spiritual home, as a lot of these players do. I mean, your own Rees in your bird camps, uh, Ivory was a spiritual home. With Eric, Old Trafford was and it suited him down to the ground. He had, um, he had Mark Hughes up top. He had uh, Kanchowski's gigs down the side. He got Keane, Button, Scholes behind him. And all he used to do is sit in that little hole, pick up the ball and dictate the play and pick out his passes and drift into positions and score goals. Suited him down to the ground. And you've got to say, you know, his contribution to Manchester United, uh, yeah, it was phenomenal. Yeah. It was phenomenal. But as a footballer, you know, absolute, yeah, 
Yeah, he was a uh, well, great, great player. But just going back, it was something that just cropped in mind. Going back to Tony Yeboah, um, Yobo, Yobo had power, and we had a training game at Leeds. And what we used to do, the movable goal. So you bring the goals in onto the 18 yard, both 18 yard boxes. So it's a shortened pitch. And uh, Yobo's, uh, the ball's popped out. I, I think there was a corner or something, and the ball pops out. And, and Yobo, he, he's in our own half, so he's probably about 40, 45 yards. He, he, he hit a half volley that was literally 12, 12 inches off the ground all the way, the bottom left-hand corner of the goal. And that was in one of his first training sessions. And it sort of, we all sort of... Right. Okay. <laughs> this guy, this guy can play a little bit, but yeah. So back, back to back to Eric, and Eric was a character. I mean, he, he's he certainly got an ego without a shadow of a doubt. But uh, most of these players have got egos. But without that side of it, you're not the performer that you you could be. You know, and yeah, I think it was uh, was it Muhammad Ali? Muhammad Ali. Um, said um somebody said to him oh well you know you come over as arrogant he says you're only arrogant if you can't back it up <laughs> you know, which, uh, that leads us brilliantly on to your dinner guests oh oh i wonder who's in it and your your number one dinner guest he is let me just have a look. oh yeah muhammad ali hey <laughs> he's creeping up on people's list and he's on our two he's, he's in, yeah. in the league table he's, definitely he's up with tiger woods now up there yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know how Muhammad Ali could not be on anybody's, uh, not on anybody's list. You know, it, it, you know. I think I, I read something Angelo Dundee, who was his trainer, and it probably puts it into perspective. And I, I suppose, and this is in a day and age now where you haven't got um, social media and and you haven't got the uh, the links now that 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 the TV companies have got. And he's on an aircraft with Angelo Dundee. Um, and I'm not sure what period in his in his career it was, but obviously he was world champion at that point. And Angelo, and he's looking, uh, Mohamed Ali's looking out the window. And Angelo Dundee says to him, he said, he says, champ, he said, um, what's it like to look out that window and look down and know that everybody down there knows who you are? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And that's in a profound, day. isn't it? Very profound. Well, it is in, in a day when communication like, wasn't it was there. I suppose yeah. that's how Jesus feels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did God say that to him? <laughs> yeah, God said to him. God said, "How does it feel like to look out and see?" And Jesus <laughs> went. Jesus yeah. said, "Oh, it's not all it's cracked up to be." <laughs> Judas Iscariot said that to him. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I mean that's the stature of the man, and, and not only not only um, as a sportsman, but uh, I mean he did a lot of good for a lot of communities, um, and he was a clever guy. He was a bright, switched on guy, you know, who you have to admire, and uh, you, you know, particularly in the later stage of his boxing career, perhaps when he should have stopped by then, uh, and he didn't, and perhaps that caused the um, causes ill health in later life, but nevertheless, you know, uh, as a as a tactician, probably not the best boxer by any means. But I think, in terms of uh, strategy and the way he went about things and the way that he he manipulated fights and manipulated people, absolutely top quality. Yeah. Brilliant. He's on. He's number on. Number two on your list, John. Uh, number two. Ayrton Senna. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that man, superstar of the sport, really, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. Movie yeah. star looks and uh, charisma and just the whole cabal. Well, uh, and, and the drive and determination. You know, this is what, you, you know, and the win it all costs business, uh, which is, um, yeah, again, it's, it, it, you're back to that animal of... Um, you know, you can't put things like that into people. And I think, had he not crashed, um, quite interestingly, it's, it's Monaco Monaco weekend. 
But Ayrton Senna has six wins at Monaco and he would have had seven had he had not made a mistake when he was way out in front and crashed the car. Yeah. You know, and, and the other thing that sort of like gives me a little bit of an affinity with him is the fact that he was the same age as me and his life was ended at 34, was he? In 1994, I think he died. Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, but again, you know, you listen to the racing drivers and you listen to, uh, I, was, I was listening to Nico Rosberg and he was talking about Senna saying that Senna used to say he, he got in the zone. And Rosberg was saying that, um, you know, there's only three or four races that he, he actually was in that zone of, of being in total and utter control of what he was doing. Mm. Whereas Senna was probably in that zone far, far more than any of the other drivers. Sure. And, and, and don't forget that we're, we're dealing in a generation now because he never, you can say he's the greatest of all time of his generation because Formula One, as all sports, have moved on, as we've said earlier. You know, but what you have to realize is that there's Ayrton Senna and drivers of his generation, death was a reality because the safe, safety at that point in, in, in that sport was. It wasn't non-existent, but it certainly, you know, wasn't as advanced as it is now. And mm. the cars were as advanced. So you basically, well, what, what the better, you sat on an engine. Yeah, yeah. You know, now, you know, yeah, he he dominated it. He dominated yeah. the sport, you know. And if you listen to, to, to the greats, you know, even Schumacher put him down as number one. You know, but as I say, you have to qualify it by saying of a generation, really. Yeah. But he's got to be in there and died so young. And perhaps he was at a point in his career when he died that he was perhaps even thinking about um, leaving the sport. But, but, but his legacy is more than just sport because he did an awful lot for Brazil um, and for kids in Brazil. He donated an awful lot of his money. Uh, and not advertise the fact he did that out of his, uh, you know, on his own with mm. no, ad didn't shout from the rooftops, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. He did it out of the goodness of his heart. And I think that says a lot about the individual as well. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah. So he's got to be on my list. Yeah. Right? Not just yeah. a great sportsman, but a great human being. Yeah. Absolutely. And if you'd have, if you'd have done the same to Chesterfield, they could have got that spire fixed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, do you know what? That's a bone of contention because I actually got married in that spire, Gary. And um, do you know the uh, you, you know what the uh, myth is, don't you, surrounding that? No. Well, I'll tell you. The the uh, they they say that the only time that the spire will straighten out is when a virgin gets married in the church. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then. <laughs> I'm very bad now. There's questions to be asked, I think. Isn't there? <laughs> I think Charlie Nicholas needs to be asked a few things. <laughs> I don't know where you got that info, but did Ian Parsons just give you that bit of info? <laughs> <laughs> um, now we're going to number three on your list. Uh, Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla did the OMD sing about uh, the Tesla girls. Nikola Tesla. Tesla girls. Yeah. I don't know anything about Nikola Tesla. No, neither do I, but I just thought I'd throw him in there, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> uh, he's a um, Nikola Tesla, uh, fellow Serb, uh, very similar to my parents. Uh, he was ah. a Serb, Serb born in Croatia, um, which wasn't quite as bad as perhaps when my parents uh, were born uh, and, and what they lived through. But born in... Uh, 40, uh, was it, when was he born? 1846, I think it was. So he was, uh, yeah, just over 100 years before. 1856, I, I think he was born. 18, pardon, 1856. 1856, yeah. yeah. So 104 years before I was born. So the, there's a little bit of a correlation between us. Uh, not that I, but stupendously bright. Um, had an upbringing, really, an input. his father was a uh, an Orthodox priest. Um, but Einstein was interviewed uh, once, and the, the interviewer asked Albert Einstein, what's it like to be the smartest man in the world? And he said, I don't know, ask Nikola Tesla. Yeah. Wow. wow. So 
that that's the company that he was keeping, and that's that's the that's how people held him in, in that sort of esteem. But he 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 drifted around Europe. I think he went uh, he went to Graz first uh, into the technology college. Didn't really finish that. Um, then he went to Prague, into Hungary, Paris, and then eventually ended up in um, in the United States working for Thomas Edison. <laughs> and Thomas Edison basically nicked most of his ideas. And uh, people say, well, Nikola Tesla. But as we sit here and as you sit there, the very thing that, that supplied all the, all the power was invented by Nikola Tesla. AC yeah. current couldn't yeah couldn't do uh, couldn't do a podcast without Nikola Tesla could we? Absolutely. Well, there you go. See, you know, and he had a lot of other things that um, remote control boats. You know, people called him a liar that he couldn't do it, or remote control vehicles, should I say? And he, he was the first one that pioneered that. Um, went to work for a guy called Westinghouse in, in the United States, who he sold his patents to, and who funded a lot of his a lot of his uh, research and uh, he was on the cusp of developing or trying to develop um, unwired power electricity yeah wireless yeah yeah which was uh, yeah which was pretty pretty state of the art so bright guy somebody i wouldn't mind having having a sit down and a chat with probably because none of the others will be able to understand the language but i still <laughs> Uh, but he's got to be in there, yeah. Uh, yes. or, or, but having said that, you know, his name is now. People talk about Tesla motor cars, you yeah. know, and, and the vast majority probably haven't even heard of Nikola Tesla. Well, that's yeah. what I, I thought it must have been. It, it must have been up to date with thinking of Tesla motor cars. I, yeah. I, thought, I didn't realize he dated back to the 1800s. Yeah, you don't associate him with that name, dear. No. Yeah, so yeah, he's got to be one of my dinner guests without a shadow of a doubt. Fi- your choice. final two dinner guests are um, will certainly keep uh, keep you amused. My final two dinner guests. Well, Robin Williams has got to be in there, hasn't he? <laughs> Hallelujah! He's yeah. back! He's oh. back! He Whoa. made it. Oh. Don't. We've lost him. He's got, yes. to be, he's got to be in there, you oh, know. Oh yes, it's a hot, beautiful night. Yes, I know. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> is that Nikola Tesla? That's, uh, <laughs> that was actually Jürgen Hinkson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know his nemesis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Robin Williams has got to be in there. I mean, it, it, no dinner would be would be complete without him there, would it? You know, as entertainment, absolutely fantastic, stonking. Uh, and I hate to say this in present company, but um, you know, and he seems to be a natural comic. Now, whether or not that 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 like anything else is is a is a mask to what's going on behind, I don't know, because obviously um, he had his trials and tribulations, he had his addictions and various other bits and bobs that he had to overcome, uh, and whether comedy was something that that got him in the zone and got him out of that and sort of he had a little bit of escapism for the period of time that he was on stage or actually being interviewed. But certainly me looking at him, uh, huge, hugely entertaining. Um, it'd be interesting to know what you lads think, you know, given that you're comics. I, I, I never got him. He's, I, is it, he's, he's, he's one that I, but Rod, Rod loves him. I, he's I, in I, my I, top one. You are? He's in my top one, I think. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, I, like I said, I've, I've said it. I've said it before on this. Rowan Williams, Richard Pryor. I can, I can, I can say, yeah, brilliant what they do. But I, for me, I, just, I didn't get either of them. Is that because he's probably not the conventional comic? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a comedy that it, it's, well, it's, it's not for me, sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it, he's, he's a bit way, yeah, yeah, you know, but. For me, it's the stream of consciousness yeah. thing that he does, isn't it? Yeah, he's, yeah. It's, it's. I, I prefer. I'm a, I'm a gag man, so I like gags. You know cool. what I mean? Yeah. I, uh, I don't rather listen to uh, Gary Delaney or Stuart Francis, Milton Jones, Tim Vine, people of that ilk. Uh, yeah. Than, than, yeah. He was. He was. He's off. The, he's off the wall, wasn't he? To be fair. Oh yeah. Well, well, I think he is, but I think I think Robin Williams is, is uh, for me. For me, he was. Um, 
I wasn't particularly fussed about his his stand up. I've seen him do a couple of bits of stand up, but I think he's more uh, as a comic. He's more in his element when he's being interviewed, mm. or is in that sort of scenario where he can just go off piece and do whatever he wants rather than having it scripted. Which a lot of the time, I suppose, can uh, mind you, I'm saying that I'm probably doing him a disservice because I pro- he's probably his stand up wasn't scripted. Oh, oh yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure a large part of it wasn't. But like a lot of the great ad libs, when they come up with something that really works, it's in the following night, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Obviously. But I think for for an entertainment point of view, for me personally, I'm sorry, guys, but Robin Williams has to be in that. Oh, listen, oh, listen, I, 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 <laughs> comedy is the most like uh, subjective thing in the world. I mean, it, it, there's no wrong or right, is there? There's no wrong no. or right. No, it's a bit like goalkeeping. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Or ten to two feet. You know. Um, <laughs> your final, yeah. your final oh. guest, uh, John. I can't yeah. believe we've gone through how many we've done so far without this man not being at a dinner party. You're joking. Nobody's had it. First time, this is. Really? I can't believe that. Stephen Fry. Ah. Yeah, I can, I can, I, you'd have him at a dinner party. Yeah. Over now. Well, you know, before this podcast started, there was a, you know, you always get the classic, who would you have around for dinner and that, which was probably gave rise to this whole thing. But Stephen Fry is widely regarded to be one of the most popular choices. And yet this is the very first time. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah. Well, she, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, do I need to say any more? No, I mean, he's, he's, you he's know, very educated, he, very interesting. Very. He's interesting. He, he, he's funny. He's considered, um, yeah. He's, he's he's just yeah. He, he seems to be. I, I don't obviously don't know, but he seems to be a top top bloke. And I mm. think that get him on any subject, and I think you know you'd have a good conversation. And also, he's very funny and very witty. Yeah, you he's know, one of, he's one of them people. That if you wound him up, just ask him a question, he'd go off, and you you wouldn't need to speak again. No, yeah. I'd sit him next to Tesla, mind. <laughs> yeah, Robin Williams there next to Tesla. <laughs> right, <laughs> Williams I'm scratching his head, thinking, "What am I doing?" <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, he's somebody that uh, again has had his trials and tribulations. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, he's gone through an awful lot in his life, and, and no doubt still do it uh, because it's so. It, you know, mental health issues don't go away overnight. And uh, he, he, I believe, has suffered immensely with that. Uh, fortunately, he seems to have found happiness in his life now. So hopefully that that be a turning point. But I don't think it ever goes away. So I suppose he masks it to a certain degree. But as a dinner guest, it'd be absolutely fantastic. You know, ask, ask him anything you want. Yeah. Uh, be a lovely you know, evening. And the, and, the, and the people that he, he he's... He knows and he's associated with, and yeah, there'd be a few good stories in there, I've no doubt. I think his personal friends is he not with um, uh, the Prince of Wales, I think, and um, yeah, part of the world family. He's also um, a Norwich City supporter, so he'll be delighted there back in the Prem, and he's yeah. also board of directors at uh, at, uh, at Carrow Road as well. Is he really? Yeah. So he wow. must be Roger Day. Yeah, <laughs> Roger, Roger Day. Yes, uh, I've not seen a great deal of Rog. As uh, have oh, you heard? Yeah, of him? yeah. This listen. He's another one who hasn't made a, a dinner list yet, but I'm sure the time will come. Oh, I, I'd have Roger Day on your dinner list all day long. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, Stephen Fry. He, he, uh, I saw him do a. He, he, he did um, not a lecture, but he did a forum. Um, we're over in the States with Jordan Peterson, who I don't know whether you've heard of or not, but, um, mm. uh, and uh, the, it, it was a debate and his summing up of the debate was absolutely fantastic. You know, so the brain and the intellect, um, and the humor would, uh, I, I think at a dinner party would, uh, keep everything on an even keel and it'd be hugely entertaining. Yeah. Absolutely. I, think, I, I look at it. If, you know, when you've, you've got to feel at ease with someone, and at like a big like a comedy, the comedy uh, awards. If Stephen Fry is hosting 
the comedy awards, you feel yeah. at ease because you don't think anyone's going to give him any any shit or anything because he is, you know, he's so he's so sharp, he's so quick witted, he's he's just so professional as well. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah, it's a good choice. I don't, I don't believe it, nobody's had him. No, nope. I think you've started something though, John. That could no, be, I don't. It could be a run of fries now. <laughs> my, I think my my selections all been left field. I think, but nevertheless, oh, no, I mean, there's, there's been there's been a few. Yeah, I mean, staying alive, obviously, that's left field. But you know, apart from the rest, <laughs> <laughs> simply the best, staying alive. <laughs> yeah, we've had some. When, when we choices. first when we first had a word with the early doors, you went. To, I'm not very good at this. I don't know. I'm going to keep this going. Well, it's. I think he's broke the two hour barrier. You're joking. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> no. Brilliant. We're gonna to have to do this in two parts. No, it's not broken two hours, is it? It has, I think yeah. It has, it? I think it has, but I'm so. Well, I've, got, I've, got to say, I've got to. I've got to say, I, I must apologise to the listeners for <laughs> this long. So, uh, uh, it's, you're the only guest I've had to get up and have a wee through. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like well, well, that well, hey, John, I've been while you've been talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, the comforting thing is you've not snoozed off anyway. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I thought it was tinkling the ivory as it was. And, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, an absolute pleasure, John. Uh, I, I've never met you before. I've always looked forward to the day that I'll pass with Cross on the circuit, but uh, they certainly have now. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in, in 3D in the not too distant. Yeah. Likewise. Cheers, Loki. Absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. I tell you what I don't like about Give Me Five, and that's that it's discriminatory against all the other numbers. I mean, what about Give Me Four or Give Me Three, Give Me Six, Give Me Two? How come no one's ever asked me to give them one? Um, that's rhetorical, of course. Well, I uh, I was about to say I'm sure he's going to go off and chill out now, but um, I think that's probably a ridiculous thing to say because he's arguably the most chilled man I've ever met. <laughs> I almost feel like I've taken a few volumes. <laughs> I'm just sat here in the afterglow. But what a man! You know, you know, he said, "Oh, I won't be very good at this." Yeah. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I, I tell you what, I really enjoyed that. Really, yeah, enjoyed it was good. Obviously, obviously, with the Arsenal bit as well, and uh, you know. I'm sure some of my followers on Twitter will, will actually tune in for this one if I, if I mention we, there's a big Arsenal uh, theme about it as well. So we we might we might hit a few more. So absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm sure he won't be uh, the first Arsenal guest we get on either, and hopefully no. not because uh, it's nice to see you in uh, such excited form. <laughs> I might have a shave next week. I don't know. <laughs> you had no time to shave. You were just too excited. I'm still busy ironing my top. <laughs> yeah, I'll get hold of that iron and uh, do these curtains. <laughs> Is it J- John's following me? Hang about. Hey, Loki. Oh, you, I think you cut yourself. Yeah, not a problem. We're just doing the. Uh, we're just doing the goodbyes, and uh, yeah, I'm, you're on. You're on. Yeah. Let's, so he's on. He's on here. Hey, is that What's John? Tell him. Tell him to but chill what, out now. Hey, he said. <laughs> Hey, thanks a lot, Bob. No, it's fine, mate. It's not a problem. We just got to brilliant sign off and, and scoot off, mate. So yeah, thanks a lot, Bob. Cheers, mate. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. Do you take you take copper? <laughs> Right, not a problem. <laughs> You'd be delighted, mate. Cheers, John. Ta-da, mate. And you. Wrong number. <laughs> I think we do. We'll do a little outro. We will go. We we could yeah, have got away. Again. I think we'll. Yeah, this would be a rambling outro. You know, considering Stephen Fry is so good at summing up debates, I know, Christ, <laughs> talked about it. We ought to do something a bit more successful. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a bit, a bit better than that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, you can you can carry on now if you um, carry on to the outro. I'll, I'll make you yeah. a little bit of that. That, that. that was quite funny. The fact he rang in a drag. I could hear his voice quite clearly as well, which is great. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
I think we could have we a bloopers bloopers. Thing, yeah, yeah. We'll have a bloopers reel at some point. I'm sure. Yeah, we will do. <laughs> cool. All right, let's go for the the outro then. So I'm gonna count you in. Five, four, three. So you know, people like they take the whole series, don't they? And then they binge watch it at the end. So I'm guessing that people are probably gonna record this whole episode because it's gonna go out over five or six weeks and watch it in one hit. Just Netflix, so- Netflix will be all over this one. <laughs> That's the new Queen's Gambit. Exactly. What he said, yeah, I'm not very good at this. I'm not, just wind him up and just let him talk. Yeah. Boy. Yeah, he was hustling us there, I think, wasn't he? He knew all along. He knew exactly what he was doing. It, very sporty theme, I thought. Uh, yeah. Very sporty um, this week. Yeah. Uh, goal is for the first time, and, and why not, to be fair? Yeah, he would know. Yeah, and I'm sure the Arsenal fans that follow me on Twitter will be... Uh, well up for this uh, this episode. So he's always massively Arsenal themed. Yeah, and what a nice guy. He, he just comes oh, over. Yeah. Top, top man. And knows his stuff as well. He does. Not yeah. as much as me, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, we had a few left field choices. I'm just looking down the list here. Staying alive. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Um... <laughs> you could never see him dancing to that, could you? No, no. I couldn't see John dancing at all. No, no, probably not. Nikola Tesla. Yeah, I thought Elon Musk invented the Tesla, but uh, of course, when you think about it, it probably was Tesla. When he said uh, uh, 1856, no, uh, that passed me by that. Yeah, yeah. He obviously came up with the theory, a bit like Da Vinci, wasn't it, with the helicopter? I mean, he thought it through, but he just didn't have the means. I'm sure somebody thought of doing a, a podcast about, you know, people's favourite choices years ago, probably in the 1800s, but it's only now we got the technology. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Edison did. <laughs> he thought about it, he, but then he thought it's a crap idea, so he knocked it on the end. <laughs> well, we'll be back with much more of the same um, and uh, possibly even a, a shorter episodes than this one, um, if you're that way inclined. But if you like the long ones, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed today. Uh, this has been a Tis Done production, courtesy of the wonderful Ian Parsons and his fantastic facts. And I think going forward, this kind of <laughs> race against time to get the facts out. I can, <laughs> developing into something. I, can see, I can see you reading them. I'm thinking, I'm having this one. I'm having this one. He's looking down. He's... <laughs> yeah, I am about to enroll in a speed reading course just so I can do <laughs> you next week. <laughs> but for now, from uh, sunny Macken, and it is rather sunny here today, looking lovely up there over the mountain. You see, it's okay. It's a bit miserable, but it's okay. Uh, it's nice to see Robin Williams back. Um, it's, oh damn! It's a hot, beautiful night. I, I, I was a bit disappointed. He, he, he wasn't that impressed with my impression. It's my best no, one, no. as we all know. He rang me up and said, "Who was that?" He was on about. So, uh, and, and you know, at the top of the show, I had a phone call. It was from my sister Jess, and she probably thought I'll ring you back in three hours. So here she is again. <laughs> Lovely. Answer it. I'll answer it. Till then, nanu nanu, nanu nanu. Cheers. 